Good evening. I am the man in black. I am called the man in black because I have an adversion for life. I am here tonight. What are you doing? Dim the lights, you fool imbeciles. Excuse me, where was I? Oh yes, I'm here to introduce you into a program that appears into the darkest side of human weakness, the thoughtless, the mean, that leads to a murder. Tonight, from Portland Christian, we present you a study of terror written by Lucille Fletcher called Sorry, Wrong Number. Enjoy the show. Warning, this product is not meant for the squeamish. Watch at your own risk. Oh dear. Your call, please. Operator, I've been dialing Murray Hill 40098 now for the last three quarters of an hour. The line's always busy, but I don't see how it could be busy that long. Will you try it for me, please? Mary Hill, 40098. One moment, please. I don't see how it could be busy all this time. It's my husband's office. He's working late tonight, and I was trying to reach him to ask him to come home. We need Mary Hill, 40098. Hello? Hello? Uh, hello. Is Mr. Stevenson there? Hello? 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 Who is this? What number am I calling, please? Hello? 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 Hello, George? Yes, sir. We've heard from our client. He says the coast is clear for tonight. Yes, sir. Where are you now? In a phone booth. Okay. You know the address. At 11 o'clock, the private patrolman goes around at 2nd Avenue for a break. Be sure all the lights downstairs are out. There should be only one light visible from the street. At 11.15, the subway train crosses the bridge, makes a noise in case her window's open, and she should scream. Oh, hello. Who is this? What number am I calling, please? Okay, I understand. Make it quick. As little blood as possible. A client does not wish to make her suffer long. Knife okay, sir? Yes, a knife will be okay. And remember... Remove all the rings and bracelets and the jewelry in the bureau drawer. Our client wishes to make it look like a simple robbery. Okay, I get Oh, how awful. How unspeakably. Your call, please. Operator, I, I've just been cut off. I'm sorry, madam. What number were you calling? Why, it was supposed to be Murray Hill 40098, but it wasn't. Some wires must have crossed, and I was cut into a wrong number, and I just heard the most dreadful thing, a, a murder. And, operator, you'll simply have to retrace that call at once. I beg your pardon, madam. I don't quite... Oh, I know it was a wrong number, and I had no business listening. But these two men, they were cold-blooded fiends. They're planning to murder this woman at 11.15 tonight. What number were you calling, madam? Can't you for once forget what number I was calling? This was a wrong number, and you dialed it. And we've got to find out what it was immediately. What number were you calling? Oh, why are you so stupid? <laughs> Look, it was obviously a case of some little slip of the finger. I told you to try Murray Hill 40098. You dialed it, but your finger must have slipped, and I was cut into a wrong number, and I could hear them, but they couldn't hear me. Now I simply failed to see why you couldn't make that same mistake again, okay. on purpose, why you couldn't try to dial Murray Hill 40098 the same careless sort of way. Murray Hill 40098, I'll try to get it for you, madam. Thank you. I am sorry, madam. Murray Hill 40098 is busy. Operator. Operator. Yes, madam? You didn't try to get that wrong number at all. I asked explicitly, and all you did was dial it correctly. I'm, I'm sorry, madam. What number were you calling? Can't you for once forget what number I was calling and do something specific? Now, I want you to retrace that call. It's my civic duty. It's your civic duty to retrace that call and to apprehend those dangerous killers. And if you won't, I will contact you with the chief operator. Please.
this chief operator. Chief operator? Oh. I want you to retrace a call. A telephone call. Immediately. I don't know where it came from or who is making it, but it's absolutely necessary that it be tracked down because it was about a murder. Yes, a terrible, cold-blooded murder of a poor, innocent woman at 11.15 tonight. I see. Can you trace it for me? Can you track down those men? It depends, madam. Depends on what? It depends on whether the call is still going on. If it's a live call, we can trace it on our equipment. If it's been disconnected, we can't. Disconnected? If the parties have stopped talking to each other. Well, but of course they must have stopped talking to each other by now. That was at least five minutes ago. And they didn't sound like the type who would make a long call. Well, I can try tracing it. Now, what is your name, madam? Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Stevenson. But listen. And your telephone number? Plaza 42295. But if you go on wasting all this time... And what is your reason for wanting this call to be traced? My reason? Well, for heaven's sake, isn't it obvious? I overheard two men. They're killers. They're planning to murder this woman at 11.15 tonight. It's a matter for the police. Have you told the police? No. How could I? You're making this check into a private call purely into a private individual. Yes, but meanwhile... I... Well, Mrs. Stevenson, I seriously doubt whether we can have this call for you just this time, just on your say-so. We'd have to, uh, as a private individual, we'd have to have something more official. Oh, for heaven's sake, you mean to tell me I can't report a, a murder without getting tied up in all this red tape? Well, it's perfectly idiotic. All right, then. I will call the police. Ridiculous. Your call, please. Police department. Please. In the police department. Police department. Prison 43. Sergeant Duffy speaking. Police department. Oh. This is Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Smythe Stevenson of 53 North Sutton Place. I'm calling to report a murder. Uh. I, I mean, the murder hasn't been committed yet. I just overheard the plans for it over the telephone. Over a wrong number the operator gave me. I've been trying to trace it down myself, but everyone is so stupid, and I guess, in the end, you're the only people who could actually do anything. Yes, ma'am. It was a perfectly definite murder. I heard their plans distinctly. Two men were talking. They were planning to murder some woman at 11.15 tonight. She lived in a house near a bridge. Yes, ma'am. And there was a private patrolman on the street. He was going around for a break on 2nd Avenue. And there was some third man, a client, who was paying to have this poor woman murdered. They were going to take her rings and bracelets and use a knife. Well, it's unnerved me dreadfully and I'm not well. I see. When was all this, ma'am? About eight minutes ago. Oh, then you can do something. You do understand. What is your name, ma'am? Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Albert Stevenson. And your address? 53 North Sutton Place. That's near a bridge. The Queensboro Bridge, you know? And and we, we have a private patrolman on our, our street, on, on 2nd Avenue. And what was the number you were calling? Murray Hill 40098. But that wasn't the number I ever heard. I mean, Murray Hill 40098 is my husband's office. He's working late in the, tonight. And I was trying to reach him to ask him to come home. I'm an invalid, you know? And it's my maid's night off, and I hate to be alone, even though he says I'm perfectly safe, as long as I have the telephone right beside my bed. Well, well Miss Stevenson, um, we'll take care of it, and, and we'll see if we can check in with the telephone company. But the telephone company already said they couldn't check the call. The two parties have stopped talking. I already taken care of that. Oh, yes. Personally, I feel you ought to do something far more immediate and drastic than just check the call. What good does checking the call do if the two parties have stopped talking? By the time you'll have traced down the call, they'll already have committed the murder. Well, we'll take care of Miss Stevenson, don't worry. Will you broadcast to all of the city and send out squads? Warn your radio cars to watch out, especially the suspicious neighborhoods like mine? Well, what makes you think the murder's gonna be committed in your neighborhood, ma'am? Oh, I don't know. 
This whole coincidence is just so horrible. The private patrolman, 2nd Avenue, and the bridge. 2nd Avenue is a very long street, ma'am. And you happen to know how many bridges there are in the city of New York alone? Not to mention Brooklyn, Staten Island, the Queen, and the Bronx. How do you know there isn't just some little house in Staten Island on some little 2nd Avenue that you've never even heard about? How do you know they were even talking about New York at all? But I heard the call on the New York dialing system. How do you know it wasn't just a long distance call you overheard? You see, telephones are funny things. Well, look at it this way. Supposing you hadn't broken in on that call. Supposing you, wait, supposing, supposing you got in the husband you were or I was you. Would this murder have made any difference to you then? I suppose not, but it's so inhuman. So cold-blooded. A lot of murders are committed every day, ma'am. If we could do something to stop them, we would. But a clue this kind of so vague is much more used to us than no clue at all. But surely... Unless, of course, you have some reason for thinking that this call is a phony. And that someone would be planning to murder you. Me? Oh, no. I hardly think so. I, I mean, why should anybody? I'm all alone day and night. I see nobody except my maid, Eloise. She's too lazy to bring my breakfast tray. And the only other person is my husband, Albert. He's crazy about me, adores me, waits on me hand and foot. Scarcely left my side since I took sick 12 years ago. Well then, there's nothing for you to worry about, is there? And now, and I feel to leave this to the rest of us. But what will you do? It's so late, it's nearly 11 o'clock. Well, take care of her, lady, don't worry. Will you broadcast all of the city? And send out squads? And more new radio cars to watch out? Especially in suspicious neighborhoods like mine? Lady, I said we'll take care of it. Right now I've got a couple of other matters here on my desk that require immediate... Oh! Idiot. Uh -oh. Now why did I do that? I don't think I am a fool. Why doesn't Albert come home? Why doesn't he? Take call, please. Operator? For heaven's sake, will you try that Murray Hill 40098 number for me, just once more? I can't think what's keeping him so long. Ringing Murray Hill 40098. The line is busy. Shall I? You don't have to tell me. I can hear it. I know it's busy. If I, if I could only just get out of this bed just for a little while, if I could get a breath of fresh air, just... Lean out the window and see the street. Hello? Albert? Hello? 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 Oh, what's the matter with this phone tonight? Hello? 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 Hello, who is this? Hello? Hello? Your call, please. Operator, I don't know what's the matter with this telephone tonight, but it's positively driving me crazy. Yes, ma'am. I've never seen such m inefficient, miserable service. Now look, I'm an invalid, and it's my maid's night off, and I'm not supposed to be annoyed, but if this keeps on much longer... Yes, madam. Well, everything's wrong. The whole world could be murdered for all you people care. No, my phone keeps ringing. Yes, madam. Ringing and ringing and ringing every five seconds or so. When I pick it up, there's no one there. If you hang up, I might be able to test it for you. I don't want you to test it for me. I want you to put through that call, whatever it is, at once. I'm afraid that's not possible, madam. Not possible? And why, may I ask? The system is automatic, madam. There's no way to check whether the call is coming through or not unless the person who's trying to call you complains to their particular operator. Well, the stupid, complicated, I mean, well, I've got to sit here in my bed, suffering every time that phone rings, imagining everything. Well, if you hang up, I might be able to check it for you. Check it, check it, that's all anybody can do. All the stupid, idiotic. Oh, what's the use? Hello? Hello, who is this? Do you hear me? Answer me! What do you want? Do you realize you're driving me crazy? Stark staring. Hello, this is Western Union. I have a telegram here from Miss Albert Stevenson. Is there anyone there to receive the message? I am Mrs. Stevenson. The telegram is as follows. 
Miss Albert Stevenson, 53rd North Sutton Place, New York, New York. Darling, terribly sorry. Tried to get in for the last hour, but line's busy. Be leaving for on ur leaving for Boston 11 p.m. tonight on urgent business. Be back tomorrow afternoon. Keep happy. Love, signed Albert. And now, do you wish us to receive to send a copy of the message? No, no, thank you. Thank you, madam. That's all. Good night. Good night. No, I couldn't do it. Not when he knows I'd be all alone. It's it's some it's some trick. Some some fiendish. Your call, please. Operator, for heaven's sake, will you try that Murray Hill four zero zero nine eight number for me just once more? I don't know what's keeping him so long. Singing Murray Hill four zero zero nine eight. He's gone. But Robert, how could you? How could you? But I can't be alone tonight. I can't. I'm alone one more second. I don't care what he says or what the expense is. I'm a sick woman. I'm entitled. This information. I want the telephone number of Hensley Hospital. Hensley Hospital? Do you have the address to that? No, but it's somewhere in the 70s, though. It's a very small, private, and exclusive hospital where I had my appendix out two years ago. Hensley, H-E-N-C... One moment, please. Please hurry, and please, what is the time? I do not know the time, madam. You may find out the time by dialing Meridian 71212. Oh, please, couldn't you? The number of Hensley Hospital is Butterfield 70105. Butterfield 70105. Hensley Hospital, good evening. Nurses Registry. Nurses you wish to speak to, please. I want the nurses registry. At once. I want a trained nurse. I want to hire her immediately for the night. I see him. What is I see you want the nature of this case, madam? Nerves. I'm very nervous. I need soothing and companionship. My husband is away, and I'm... Have you been recommended to us by any doctor in particular, madam? No, but I really don't see why I was catechizing is necessary. I want a trained nurse. I want to hire her immediately for the night. And after all, I do expect to pay this person. We quite understand that, madam. The registered nurses are very scarce just now, and your superintendent has us. Several people only on cases where the physician in charge feels it is absolutely necessary. Well, it is absolutely necessary. I'm a sick woman. I, I'm very upset. Very. And tonight I overheard a telephone conversation that upset me dreadfully about a murder. A poor, innocent woman who's going to be murdered at 11.15 tonight. In fact, if someone doesn't come at once, I'm afraid I'll go out of my mind. I see. Well, I'll speak to Miss Phillips as soon as she comes in. Miss Phillips, and, and when do you expect her in? I don't know, madam. She ran out to supper at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? But, but it's not 11 yet. Oh, my clock has stopped. I thought it was running down. What time is it? It's 14 minutes past 11. What's that? What was what, madam? That, that click just now in, in my own telephone as though someone had lifted the receiver off the extension phone downstairs. I see. Well, I didn't hear anything. But I did. There's someone in this house. Someone downstairs in the kitchen. And they're listening to me now. They're... I won't pick it up. I won't let them hear me. I'll be quiet, and they'll think... But if I don't pick it up now while they're still down there, I need no more time. Your call, please. Operator, I... I'm in desperate trouble. I, I can't hear you, madam. Please speak louder. I, I don't dare. I, there's someone listening. You can hear me now. Your call, please. You've got to hear me. Oh, please. You've got to help me. There's someone in this house. Someone who's going to murder me. And you've got to get in touch with the... There it is. He's put it down. He's put down the extension. Ah! He's coming up the stairs. Give me the police department. The police! Bring the police department.
Police Department, Prison 43, Sergeant Duffy speaking. Police Department, Duffy speaking. Sorry, wrong number. I hope you enjoyed tonight's performance of Sorry Wrong Number. If you can't go to sleep after something so spooky, you're in luck. Stay tuned for our comedy presentation of the silliest sort called Don't Tell a Soul. Enjoy the show.